Uh, hi, and welcome to our presentation in which we will present uh, uh, a Levantine corpus, morphologically annotated corpus for Palestinian and uh, Lebanese uh, mainly. I am uh, Mustafa Jarrar, and I have with me also my colleague Karim Haf. We did this work in collaboration with uh, our colleagues Taima Hamouda and Fadi Zarakit. Before starting, uh, I would like to mention that in our research group at Birzeit University, we have released uh, several lexical resources which are available online, including the Arabic ontology or WordNet, uh, a very large lexical uh, lexicographic database, in addition to several dialects, uh, morphologically annotated uh, corpora, and uh, a, set, a large set of uh, lexical ABIs uh, to provide access to our uh, data set and services such as uh, where this disambiguation and uh, nested uh, named entity recognition for Arabic. Okay, so the problem we want to tackle in this paper is to provide a, a morphologically uh, annotated corpus for Levantine uh, dialect, which is spoken in this area. So as we know, Arabic is a low, low resource language and Arabic can be classified into classical Arabic. So it's the old Arabic or the modern standard Arabic, which is the official language that it's people used to write mainly or to talk on, uh, on uh, official media. But we start also to see people writing in their, their dialects, especially over uh, uh, social media platform. So this is, this is making a challenge to, for uh, NLP applications to understand and process such a text. Uh, uh, so as I said in this, in, in this paper, we did two contributions. Uh, we revisited the annotations uh, of a published uh, corpus called Qurras for Palestinian Arabic. And we extended with uh, a Baladi, a Lebanese morphologically annotated corpus. So both hoping that both will provide a more Levantine corpus. Both are available over this site. Now I will give the uh, mic to my colleague Karim to uh, present the Lebanese corpus. Karim. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, yes, so when we, when we created the Baladi corpus, uh, that we used to extend the Quraas corpus to create a more Levantine corpus. We, we chose, uh, uh, we collected about uh, 9.6 thousand tokens uh, divided into 424 sentences from many different places. So Facebook posts on social media that have a more colloquial uh, tone, blog posts that have a more informative tone that were written in the Lebanese dialect and traditional poems of the Zajal tradition in Lebanon. Uh, to annotate our corpus, we, um, we populated a smart Google sheet with it and we annotated it by, uh, and it was annotated by four annotators over a period of 10 months. And so we have over here a, um, an example of one annotated word with many different features that we will be talking about um, in detail in the next slides. So for example, this is one a chunk of our un annotated corpus. We start with a token, which is the word itself as it is um, extracted. And we, 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 we made a conscious decision of working with uh, the dialect written in the Arabic script, because sometimes people tend to use the Latin uh, script as, or as we call it, Arabizi. But for some reasons we chose to, for convenience, we chose to work uh, primarily on the Arabic script. The um, first of all, the first feature that we annotated would be the coda. The coda is the conventional orthography for dialectal Arabic. It's a proposed orthographical system that we pro that was also used for the Palestinian dialect. Uh, in order to uh, unify the uh, and standardize the 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 spelling inside the corpus, because sometimes people tend to write a non-standardized language or dialect in many different ways. So for, 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 for comp computational purposes, it's important to uh, standardize writing and spelling. Then 
we uh, worked, we, we annotated the affixes, so the prefixes and the suffixes, the morphemes that come before and after each uh, word. And uh, they're identical in Lebanese and Palestinian, but sometimes there are, there are some morphemes that differ due to regionalism, such as interrogative particles, where uh, uh, in Lebanese we would say malaash, in, Leb in Palestinian, would, uh, Palestinian would say uh, alaash, the m and the a differ between both. This is one example, but they're identical mostly. And suffixes are also identical between Lebanese and Palestinian, but we noticed one striking difference, uh, and that, that is that of the usage of the, um, the plural when we are talking to the second or the third person. And, um, and it's mostly noticed, noticeable when it comes to the, the ending of that plural where Lebanese people say, uh, m, use the letter m, m, meme, to express the plural, and Palestinian use, sorry, the Lebanese people use the letter nun, n, for the plural, and the Palestinians mostly use the letter m, meme. But in Northern Palestine, the varieties there use the n, like the Lebanese, so we can notice the continuum there. And that was one interesting feature that we noticed in the work. Then we have the stem, um, uh, basically, we, we use the, the tag sets used in SAMA, SAMA, which is um, a morphological database um, developed by LDC. For, for the STEM, we also used, the, the, we read the words of the, its variations, the affixes, we put it, and then we added its part of speech from the SAMA tag set. And then we have, uh, annot we annotated the, um, a pretty standard feature, pretty standard features like part of speech, uh, person, it could be the first, second, third person aspect, exclusively for verbs. It could be P, uh, perfective, I, imperfective, or C, command. Uh, the gender, if it's masculine, feminine, or none. Um, and the number, if it's singular, plural, or as it is common for uh, many Semitic languages, a dual. Then we annotated the modern standard Arabic lemma equivalent of the word that we are annotating from the dialect. And, um, uh, and we, we use the, the, the lemmas from the SAMA uh, database. And if, there is, if, if the lemma in SAMA doesn't exist, we just you wrote our own uh, lemma and then added the zero to say that it is a new solution. Then we annotated the dialectal lemma. So some words in the naturally in, in the Levantine do not exist in standard Arabic, in Lebanese or in Palestinian. Anyway. So we had to write a new lemma for, for that word that is, that is exclusive for the dialect. And we put it side by side with the modern standard Arabic lemma to see that the equivalences, the differences, and that will be an interesting feature to, uh, to look at in the future. Then we have the frequent functional words in Lebanese, uh, as opposed to some frequent funct functional words in Palestinian. Well, mostly they are identical, but we noticed, we explored, and we um, detected some differences, mainly due to regionalisms that we can see in this table, for example. Uh, for example, with Lebanese people would say eh for yes, Palestinian would say ah. Oh. And such examples are limited, but um, pretty noticeable because of regionalisms in any dialectal continuums. Uh, I will pass now the microphone to my colleague, Dr. Jarrar. Thank you, Karim. Uh, so to talk about the evaluation of the annotations, uh, uh, we uh, selected some sentences randomly, uh, about 400 tokens. Uh, we re-annotated them. And uh, we measured the, the inter-annotator agreement with the Kaaba. Uh, we reached uh, good results, so it's, it's about 78.5. We also re-annotated the uh, 400 by an expert. And we compared the results of the annotations of the experts with the, with the original annotations, uh, with all annotators, actually. And we see uh, that we reached the F1 score of uh, 90%. Okay, now I will move to talk about uh, the revisions of Kuras. So Kuras was originally uh, published a uh, few years ago, 
And, but because it was uh, used in, in several applications, and especially when we came to uh, also reuse the annotations for uh, the Lebanese, we found some actually mistakes, or we wanted to, move, to do some improvements. Uh, the improvements we did uh, are the following. So first of all, we uh, barred all tokenization and BOS tags, and we make sure that uh, they are correct. Uh, we also revisited, actually we focused on this, uh, the lemmatization, the MSA lemmas and the dialect lemmas. We make sure, we make very sure that every uh, single lemma is mapped to SAMA or underscored with zero to say it's MSA but does not exist in SAMA uh, and make sure that they are linked with the uh, dialect lemmas. We revisited the other features also. So the, together, it was uh, a revisit or revisions of almost all uh, annotations. At the end, we produced a table called uh, solution table, which is a unique solution. So because a word can appear with the same annotations different times in the corpus. So we remove redundancies and we generate the solution table. We use this table, the solution table to in the, uh, while annotating the uh, Lebanese corpus. By doing this, we actually, both corpora, the baladi and corras can be used as one corpus, as one uh, compatible corpus. Uh, both corpora are, are available in this uh, link. Um, uh, so people can search and uh, see, retrieve all annotations and see everything and they can see whether it's from Lebanese or uh, 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 Palestinian. And it's also available for, uh, for NLB research. Uh, to summarize, so we present a, a new Lebanese morphologically annotated corpus. We revisited uh, an existing Palestinian morphologically annotated corpus. Together, uh, we presented a more Levantine corpus. Uh, the details are, can be found on the paper. Uh, that's the end of our talk. Thank you very much for listening, and we are uh, happy to answer uh, any question by email or uh, or directly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and um, yeah, it's it will be interesting to see how uh, this kind of corpus would be used in the future for um, projects, uh, because well, dialects are mostly under resourced, and we would be sad to keep them that way. And it would be nice to see how. The, what the future holds for uh, dialects such as our native tongues that are not re usually represented in uh, in research, and um, hopefully many good things can be done. And automatic translation, uh, uh, pedagogy to uh, to teach Levantine as a second language to people in diaspora because we have such a huge huge diaspora worldwide as Palestinians, Lebanese, Syrians, Jordanians in general. So yes, hopefully this, uh, this can be the start of something uh, uh, nice for, for this area of research. And thank you very much for tuning in and hope to see you in Marseille. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.